In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We make confession. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Our reading for today comes from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears.
people aren't very good at listening. You'd think that it wouldn't be that difficult. All you have to do is stand there and nod your head occasionally while the other person is talking. Or if you're on the phone, you just do the yeah, 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 oh yeah thing. But just because you do those things, that doesn't mean that you're actively and honestly listening. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about based upon what happens when you're trying to tell your husband something. There are seminars and courses out there that try to help people learn how to improve their listening skills. I had to take one of those classes as a requirement back in college. Can't remember anything that was taught in the class though because I wasn't really paying attention to what it was that the professor was saying. Now across the board, people would rather be talking or doing things or dreaming about things or watching things than they would be listening. It's not something that is on their list of top 10 things that are important to them. Today, I'm going to challenge you to do better than I did in that class that I took back in college. I'm gonna challenge you to pay attention and to think about how important listening is, especially when it comes to listening to God. In our Old Testament reading, we're introduced to the prophet Samuel. When Samuel was a young boy, he worked in the temple in Jerusalem, carrying out various tasks there under the watchful supervision of a man by the name of Eli. We'll be talking more about the two of them in a little while. Right after we are introduced to Eli and Samuel, we're told that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. In other words, God had decided that he wasn't going to speak to his people anymore. Why would God do that? Why would he stop communicating with the people that he so lovingly chose and set free from slavery in Egypt and led to the promised land? Well, if you realize that the one that you're speaking to isn't listening, what do you do? You stop talking. Or possibly you might do like I used to do when my mom would tune me out. I would start spewing forth all sorts of nonsense, purposely babbling on about the dumbest and most outrageous stuff to see how long it would take her to catch on to what I was up to. God didn't babble on like that. He, except on a few rare occasions, stopped speaking to the people of Israel because the Israelites didn't want to hear what he had to say to them. What had caused them to get to that point? Were the things that God was telling them so boring that they couldn't tolerate hearing what he had to say anymore? Was God one of those why use one word when a thousand will do types when it came to communicating? One of those who just goes on and on and on and on. It wasn't either of those things. One part of the people's problem was that they had simply become too preoccupied with what was going on in their own lives to waste their time with God. He was as high up on their top 10 priority list as listening was, maybe lower. And another reason why they turned their ears off to him was that they didn't want God or anybody else for that matter trying to tell them what to do. They wanted to be independent liberated, autonomous. The last thing that they were willing to take time out of their busy lives for was to stand around while some prophet of the Lord spouted about what God wanted them to know. And so since they didn't want to listen, God went silent. Is God silent today? Has he stopped speaking to us like he did to the Israelites during the days leading up to him calling Samuel to be his prophet? Honestly, things aren't that different when you compare the way things were back then to the way they are now. I mean, we're often too busy to be bothered to stop and hear what God has to say to us. We don't want him telling us what to do or not to do. Has that caused God to go silent? Now, God may not be speaking to us through his prophets, prophets like Samuel, the way that he did with his people during the Old Testament days, but he is still speaking to us through the scriptures if we're willing to hear what he has to say there. How often is it, however, that we listen to him? I mean, really listen to him. Now, here's where we can put on our holier-than-thou hats and think that, People who aren't listening are the ones who don't come to church. 
that the not listening thing doesn't apply to us. But think about Eli and Samuel. Eli and Samuel were both there in God's temple, God's house, day in and day out, doing all sorts of religious types of things. And yet in verse seven, we're told that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. It should make you think, is it possible for us to be in the Lord's house day after day, week after week, and still be like Samuel was? To not know God? To not listen to him? Let's be honest, being physically present when someone is trying to communicate with you is not the same thing as actually listening to and hearing the person and taking what they say to heart. We established that at the very beginning of this message. So are we in danger of missing out on salvation because we don't listen to God intently enough? Do we have to work harder at it? And how hard is enough? What tactics do we have to use in order to be listening spiritually correctly? Now here's where listening to what God says to us in our reading can really set us straight. Who was it that approached whom in our reading? Was it Samuel who called out to God and initiated the conversation? No, Samuel didn't know the Lord, even though he might have heard some things about the Lord as he worked in the temple. No, God is the one who reached out to Samuel. God is the one who started the conversation and the relationship. God is the one who called Samuel to follow him, to listen to him, and to speak out on his behalf. God opened Samuel's ears. It's kind of neat that we don't have to do something difficult or complicated to get to know the Lord. All we have to do is to not block out what God is saying to us with all sorts of busy, important, sinful noise. Did you hear God speaking to you towards the beginning of the service? I mean, right after you confessed your sins and, and called out for forgiveness, God told you that his son, Jesus, died for you. And that because of what he did, all your sins have been forgiven. Were you listening when God said that? In a little while in the divine service here at church, God is going to speak to you again, this time through the sacrament. What will you hear? You hear the Son of God himself say to you, here is my body given for you. Here is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And sometimes what is spoken to us becomes so familiar that we tune it out, like music quietly playing in the background. The words that God speaks to us can enter into our ears, but they don't register in our minds. They may cause our eardrums to move, but they don't move our souls to rejoice with gladness and joy. Why should our souls rejoice? Because God is speaking his forgiveness to us. And not just rarely, but over and over and over again. He's not being repetitive for the sake of being repetitive either. He's speaking that forgiveness again and again because we sin again and again. When God speaks, things happen. Just think about creation. How God spoke all that we see and touch and hear into existence. Think about what happened when Jesus spoke. Demons were cast out. The sick were cured. The dead were raised. But most of all, our sins were forgiven because he said, Father, forgive them. Yeah, listening, really listening, can be tough to do all the time. But that's not going to stop God from speaking to you calling out to you, announcing that he has chosen you, that you are his, and that because of his son's death and resurrection, you have forgiveness and life, not just now, but eternally. Listen to that, because that is God speaking to you, and what he says is true. Amen. We pray. O oh Lord, Lead us out of all deceit and into the confidence of your truth. Let us proclaim your wondrous deeds of faithfulness and salvation in Christ without fear or hesitancy. King of Israel, 
as you once called Samuel, Philip, and Nathaniel into your service. We ask that you would call men into your holy ministry today. Give them joy and confidence through your holy scriptures, that their witness would lead many to listen to and to follow Jesus, the Son of God. Almighty God, let all the nations and peoples of the earth give to you the glory that is due your name. Hear our prayers for all rulers and leaders, especially for our president and our governor, as well as all legislatures and judges. Direct them by your word and spirit and establish them in saving faith. Lead them in their offices to govern wisely for the good of their people. O oh God, have mercy upon all for whom we pray, especially Phil, Mike, Virgin, Dave's brother, and all others who come to mind. Grant healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn away from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Holy Lord, mighty God, you have shown us the face of your mercy in your Son, through whom all nations may find unity and life. Hear the prayers of your people and grant what is needful to us and to all those for whom we pray, that trusting in your mercy, our hearts may find perfect peace and rest. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.